farming keeps a busy schedule. Our Western Canadian grain farmers keep watch over a constant flow of grain from prairie fields to countries around the world and markets here in Canada. At the heart of that marketing activity is the Canadian Wheat Board, a farmer's grain sales agency. Most of Canada's grains are produced in the western provinces. The Canadian Wheat Board is responsible for selling most of these grains on behalf of farmers. This is the Wheat Board's role. Prairie-grown wheat and barley sold for export, or as food within Canada, are sold through the board. Wheat and barley grown on the prairies and sold as livestock feed within Canada can be sold either through the wheat board or through independent grain companies. In practice, most of these domestic sales are made outside the wheat board. Other grains grown in Canada, such as oats, rye, flaxseed, canola, and specialty crops, are marketed only through independent grain companies. The wheat board also does not handle the small quantities of wheat or barley grown outside the western provinces. The birth of the Canadian wheat board and the development of Western Canada's grain marketing system began in the early 1900s. Farmers began the momentum as they sought to operate their own country elevators and terminal elevators and establish their own wheat cooperatives or pools. Then, during the First World War, the government established a national sales agency to deal with the important issue of grain distribution. This agency was called the Board of Grain Supervisors, and it marketed the 1917 and 1918 wheat crops. When the war ended, a new agency was developed to help the grain marketing revert to peacetime conditions. This new agency was called the Canadian Wheat Board. While this board was in operation for only one year, it offered for the first time a workable example of centralized selling. Prairie farmers recognized several advantages in this approach. One was the initial or part payment they received when they delivered their wheat to country elevators. This payment was a guaranteed minimum return on every bushel of wheat they sold. Another was the idea of putting returns from all wheat sales into one fund and distributing the profits equitably among the farmers who participated in the fund. This was the concept of price pooling. It meant that all profits from the sale of the wheat crop were returned to the farmer and each farmer received the same price for the grain and grade delivered. Prairie farmers saw real value in price pooling Farming on the prairies was risky enough because of climate and geography. Pooling gave them a way of smoothing out the highs and lows of the year's market returns. In those days, as now, grain prices could fluctuate widely over brief periods. Farmers who were unable to deliver when prices were highest or did not have the market information needed to determine the peaks and valleys of grain prices could suffer large losses Price pooling gave them a mixture of all prices received for their grain. Farmers put political pressure on the government to establish a permanent wheat board. These demands by farmers, combined with economic conditions during the 1930s, led to the creation of the Canadian Wheat Board by an Act of Parliament in 1935. In 1943, the board became the sole receiver of all prairie-grown wheat. In 1949, its powers were extended to include oats and barley. Oats was removed from the Wheat Board's jurisdiction, effective August 1st, 1989. Today, the Canadian Wheat Board is the world's largest grain marketing board and the world's single largest merchandiser of both wheat and barley. The board is one of Canada's largest corporate enterprises and the single largest net exporter. Price pooling remains the cornerstone of the wheat board. By pooling sales returns, all farmers share in the highs and lows of the year's market prices. Each receives the same level of payment for the same grade of grain, no matter when it was delivered during the crop year. 
Farmers are paid an initial payment for the grade and type of grain they deliver to a country elevator. The initial payment is generally set below prevailing world grain values. The federal government is responsible for setting the level of the initial payment, and it guarantees this payment to farmers. The initial payment may be increased during the crop year. It cannot be reduced. If an increase is warranted, adjustments are sent to farmers who have already delivered grain. The Wheat Board sells the grain delivered to it and collects the sales revenue in four separate pool accounts. The pool accounts are wheat, durum wheat, barley, and designated barley, which is high quality barley for malting or purling. The profits from each of the four pool accounts are paid to farmers. These are final payments, and they are paid to each farmer depending upon the amount and grade of grain delivered. On rare occasions, a pool account has recorded a deficit. That is, revenue from grain sales is less than the initial payment plus marketing costs. In such a case, farmers do not receive a final payment for their grain and the federal government must make up the cost to the pool account. The Western Canadian Prairie is Canada's main grain producing region. Climate and soil combine to produce good quality grain in quantities greater than Canada can use domestically. So each year, prairie farmers have grain that they want to ship from their farm to markets around the world. Not all of that grain can be shipped from the farm at once. There is not enough capacity in prairie elevators to receive it, and Canada's railways and export ports are not equipped to handle such a surge of grain. In addition, Canada's customers want to receive grain on a regular basis throughout the year, not all at once. The Wheat Board controls farmers' grain deliveries so that customers' needs are met and the transportation and handling system can ship grain most efficiently. Control over deliveries also gives farmers a more equitable opportunity to use handling and transportation facilities. The Wheat Board signals farmers to deliver grain to country elevators as the grain is needed to meet sales. The amount each farmer delivers will vary depending on how a farmer chooses to allocate his or her delivery opportunities over the crop year. In some cases, the board will make a delivery opportunity available in one area of the prairies and not in another. However, over the course of the crop year, the board will try to make delivery chances as equal as possible for all areas. Once in the country elevator, Grain must be moved to Canadian markets or to ports for export from Canada. The Wheat Board plays a major role in coordinating the shipment of millions of tons of grain each year. Almost all grain intended for markets off the farm travels by railway. There are great distances involved and a huge collection system comprised of hundreds of grain elevators and many miles of railway tracks. To manage this movement, the Wheat Board has developed a highly coordinated system of retrieving just the right amount and kind of grain to meet sales commitments. Each week, the Board allocates rail cars to pick up grains from delivery points along individual sections of trackage. The kinds and grades of grain these cars will collect are the grains that the board earlier signaled farmers to deliver. The destination of the rail cars reflects the board's sales programs at various ports. The Wheat Board does this job even though it does not own any of Canada's handling or transportation facilities. With the exception of 2,000 rail cars, the board does not own any part of Canada's railway system. It also does not own any country or terminal elevators. These independent companies and cooperatives act as agents of the board through the annual signing of handling agreements. In all respects, 
the Wheat Board operates as an independent commercial grain trading company with one very notable feature. The Board's mandate is to achieve the best return for the farmers it serves. The aim of the Board, as stated in the Canadian Wheat Board Act, is to achieve the best combination of volume and price on behalf of prairie farmers. International grain trade is a fast-paced business. Significant volumes of grain change hands very quickly. Decisions regarding a sale have to be made on the spot. Through the terms of the Act, the Board can make these sales determinations on its own. Daily sales and pricing decisions are the responsibility of the commissioners of the Board, assisted by senior staff. Commissioners and Board staff deal face-to-face -face with international grain buyers or conclude sales of Canadian grain over the telephone or by telex. The Board enters into long-term grain agreements with foreign trading agencies. It is also responsible for arranging financing for the daily operations of the Board. The employees of the Board are not civil servants. All salaries and operating expenses of the Board are paid by farmers and not the Federal Treasury. Board Commissioners and senior executives meet regularly with the Producer Advisory Committee, which is elected by farmers for a four-year term. Their views are useful in sounding out farmer attitudes on a variety of topics dealing with Board operations. Wheat Board staff also meet regularly with farm organizations for speaking engagements or information meetings on Board activities and the board holds annual meetings throughout the prairies to hear farmers' concerns and attitudes and provide information on grain pricing and marketing. There are important ties to the federal government. The government guarantees the initial price to farmers. The government appoints the commissioners of the board. The board must report to parliament through a designated minister and produce an annual report on its operations. The federal government also guarantees payment on credit sales made by the board. Over the years, prairie farmers and their marketing system have helped lead the way of international grain trade. Canadian wheat and barley is now shipped to more than 70 countries around the world. In a world where trade power has grown increasingly concentrated, the wheat board provides prairie farmers with important market clout. It also provides a marketing system flexible enough to care for both the short-term benefits and long-term goals of prairie farmers and their customers.